Hi everyone, Shane Armin Rowe here, and today the Queez Lab external hard drive, and the only reason we're really looking at this is because it claims that it can not only work as a drive, but also pass through power, meaning you could use this drive at the same time you're charging your deck. So inside here we have the unit, we have a small cable, inside we have uh, two screwdrivers, not sure what that's going to be for, and we have this nice soft bag, inside the bag we have the magnetic ring that you'll affix to your Steam Deck to attach the drive to. It's thin, it's small. Um, I'm kind of concerned about like like getting involved with the fan, but we'll find out. And then here's the unit itself. Great name, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, probably butchering it. Uh, it's unremarkable, it's got heat fins on the top, it's got PD 100 watt in, and of course the USB-C plug. It's not too heavy. This is my regular drive that I use as an external drive. You can see it's a little thinner, but a little smaller. The Kwisak is thinner. The plate screw is a star-based screw, so you're gonna have to have this included star screwdriver, which is ridiculous. There's no reason that shouldn't have been a Phillips screwdriver head. Uh, inside we have a thermal pad. Uh, looks great, I mean, it's perfect. It's nice of them to include that. And let's take a look inside my smart drive, which I know works very, very well. There's my uh, drive in there, and you can see they both have a capacitor. The uh, the Queez, Queez Lab, <laughs> if however you pronounce that, seems to be a little bigger. Um, so that's something worth noting. And let's go ahead and check the drive. Let's make sure, we'll do a little gut check here. It does indeed fit. Now I'm gonna have to take this screw off, and guess what this is? This is like a standard flathead screwdriver. It's just, a, uh, it's ridiculous. And there's a spring on it. It took me forever to get this thing back on. I got big man hands, but that's ridiculous. You shouldn't have had to use like a standard slotted screwdriver for that. They should both have been standard small Phillips uh, style screws. All right, so let's put our uh, pad here on the back. And we are ready to button this guy up and start putting it through its paces. Once again, we have to use our star screwdriver. Again, it's included, but that's tough. First thing I would do if I were keeping this and using it every day was re replace the screws. All right, here's our cable. So I'm sure it's rated high enough because it came with the drive. Here's that port, and then here's the power port, and you're already starting to see there's a downfall to this device. It's a damn shame too. So I've got to decide where I'm gonna mount this thing. So we should probably see how long the cable's going to allow. Let me pop out my mag charger plug. I'm still using these, by the way. A lot of you are saying, well, you're still using the mag thing? Yeah, I, I love it. I, I won't use anything else. Okay, so let's plug this in and see just what my options are for mounting this thing. Now, it's got a big old magnet on it, so I probably don't want to put it anywhere towards the middle. And even if I did want to put it towards the middle, um, I can't because the, it's just not that long. There's our power input. That's horrifying. How are you, what are you gonna, how are you gonna plug that in? I want it to be away from the magnet so I can't tilt it. There's not enough room. I could replace the cable, but come on. I certainly don't want to put it there. All right, so I went and checked my smart drives cable. I thought, hey, maybe this is a little bit longer. Give me some options here. But unfortunately, it's exactly the same, I believe, in the same length. So that's not going to help me out. So I'd have to get something longer if I wanted to mount it differently. But maybe we can make it work like right here. But let's see what that looks like. I don't. I use those rear paddles all the time. Um, well, that's that's a wash. It's not going to work. So I think what we're going to need here is a 90 degree elbow. Now, of course, if you get an elbow, it's got to be rated to the power capacity, rated to the data capacity. Fortunately, I happen to have one of these on hand for just such an occasion. I will have a link in the description below how to get the right elbow here. All right. Well, hey, listen. This. Um, this might be a little tight, but I think we're in business here. So I think it's time to put this ring on and see how the whole magnetic mounting thing works. Ah, all right. So we'll put this, uh, well, let's, let's attach it to the drive and then put the drive where we want it and then tamp it down. So probably uh, somewhere right in here, I guess. All right, push it in, lock in your answer. All right, perfect. It's nice and sturdy. We'll plug it in. Let's check the fingers here. This is gonna be the test. Hey, all right, this works. All right, good deal. Next up, speed test. You guys wanna know how fast this thing is, right? I won't make you sit through the whole thing, but here are our final results. Absolutely what you would hope to see, perfect. 
Now we need to do a power test, USB-C meter time. If you don't have one of these things, you should have one. It's like 25 bucks on Amazon, I'll leave you a link. So what we have here, if we plug it directly into power, we're getting about 38 watts in. This is providing enough power to fully, full fast charge the Steam Deck at 25 and still providing all the necessary uh, power to uh, play the game. Now, uh, this is good. This is 38 and you can see that our charging time here is commensurate with what we would expect to see. All right, now we need to test it going through the drive. Yeah, guess what? It's nine or 10 watts shy. That's a ridiculous amount of power to, to not pass through. Um, so yeah, you can see we're already suffering on charging time, not good. So what this thing really is passing through is about 30 watts of power. Not great, not great at all. Uh, all right, so let's do the Windows boot test. We're gonna see how long it takes to boot Windows here because this is one of the primary reasons somebody wants to add an external drive is to have a second operating system or some means of uh, running other stuff. I'm very pleased that the boot time there is perfect. I, I would not I would not complain about that at all. There is one more thing though about these drives. What happens when you remove power to them? Especially in Windows, it's very, very finicky. So we're gonna reboot Windows again, this time with the drive in place, and we're gonna pull the power. Now it's being powered by the Steam Deck. You would think that if we pulled this, it'd be no big deal, right? But this is a use case we need to explore. Let's unplug it. Does it blue screen a death? No, hey, that looks promising. Okay, that's cool. Um, but there's one thing that I noticed right afterwards, it's dead, the entire OS is locked up. No touchscreen, no trackpad, you're done. A hard, a hard power off is the only way you're getting out of this. So it failed that test. Unfortunately, that's the case because, you know, a lot of times maybe you're powered on on the couch and you're ready to leave the house. So you wanna unplug the power, take it with you in the state that it's in. Uh, I'm afraid not. I also thought it might be cool if I could plug a dock into this thing and then get the power of the dock along with the drive. Um, but no, the, uh, it is only power input. There is no data going through there. So that's a wash as well. Of course, now we need to see what this looks like on SteamOS. Now we're not booting SteamOS off of this drive. I don't expect the momentary uh, power drop on the drive or, or across the drive case to be a problem in SteamOS, but we, uh, you know, we want to be thorough. So we'll test it over here too. Don't want to look like I'm picking on windows here. So you can see here, uh, we are charging. It is charging, even though it's going through the drive. That's good. It's just not as good as it could be, especially if you're playing it at the same time. We unplug the power. Let's see if we're locked up. We're not. We are good. Everything turned out fine. Okay, SteamOS is great. Well, I think it's time for some final thoughts here and recommendations. This is pretty much the only game in town. There may be others of these, but I haven't seen them. Leave a link in the description below if you'd like me to look at other ones of these. I, I think it's fine. I think it does mostly the job that you're asking it to do. Uh, it seems to dissipate heat fine. The magnet on the back, I never like putting magnets on the back of my Steam Deck, but based on where we mount it, it's probably fine. Longer cable might give us some different mounting options, right? So maybe we could mount it sideways towards the bottom here, where we would have a longer cable going up to the deck, but we wouldn't have to worry about using a joint. Again, the magnet's right there in the middle, the fan, I don't know. I think we're okay from a magnetic point of view but I'm concerned about the power, right? The power is the only thing, the speed's great. The power is the problem. It's only passing through about 30 watts and that's probably not very helpful. All right, listen, uh, if you like what you're seeing here, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, you guys know what to do. Leave a comment, really helps out the channel. And of course, if you use those affiliate links in our description, it will help out the channel. I'm Shane Armonroe, thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody, we'll see you next time.